coal dust and the ultimate fate of that coal dust and the environment is actually something that's probably not that well understood and really needs to be um, researched. But, um, you know, how, the, how it gets to different places, you know, the, the dust blowing off, landing on the ground, ground going into the water, going into storm water, going into the creeks, going to down, of course, into the Puget Sound, or into the groundwater, then essentially leaching out the, the uh, chemicals into the groundwater and maybe coming out on the beach at the, where the herring spawn. Those are things that really need to be looked at. Because, because there's no specific uh, regulations that address these kinds of issues that kind of fall between the, the, the major laws um, and the processes are very complicated in nature, you know, they're, they're, people need to comment on you know, what, is, what happens when this dust blows off, where does it go, you know, show us, you know, it's not going to have a problem on the herring or not going to have a problem in the groundwater. Or it's, not, you know, and, and how does it get, does it get broken down over time? Does it build up like mercury does? Of course, coal has mercury, coal has mercury and cadmium and a number of other things in it. What's the ultimate fate of those chemicals when that stuff is ultimately going to get spread, you know, off the coal train, cars, in the transfer onto these coal stacks, off the coal stacks, on the transfer down to the ships when they start putting it in the ships, you know, they, they wet it down and it goes into a cargo and they use big bulldozers basically to level it all out and pamp it down. Um, but, you know, there's still dust that blows out of there. You know, on a dusty day, windy day out on a quarter mile offshore on Cherry Point, there's a lot of wind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's going to swirl around and that dust is going to go off into the water and all over the place. So what's it going to do? Is it, you know, one of the things, there's a micro layer on the surface of the water. Um, it's called the micro layer because it's really thin, but it's an area that's of kind of unique um, characteristics. And so an area where there's a lot of times when... Um, uh, marine critters spawn, their eggs and stuff float, or their lar larvae come to the surface, and so it's an area that uh, is very important you know, from a biological perspective. And there's, of course, there's the water column, and then of course the bottom or the benthic area. Well, that dust, of course, is going to land right on that micro layer. So uh, the other thing about that is what we found out with creosote is the toxicity of those kinds of chemicals increases like a thousand times when you expose it to ultraviolet from, and other rays from the sun. So it changes the toxicity and never decreases it, it always increases it. So if you put coal dust on that micro layer and then you shine sunshine right on top of it, what's going to happen? I mean, I would love to know the answer to that. I can just about guarantee it's not going to be a good thing. So when you have uh, herring spawning on eelgrass, the eelgrass floats on the, on the surface on a low tide. You've always gone, everyone's gone out low tide and seen eelgrass laying, laying on the surface. The eggs are on that surface. That's the micro layer. The coal's on that. Coal dust is on that with the sun on it. Well, we know, you know, it's from the creosote, those PAHs, those poly aromatic, um, polycyclic, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, uh, are way more toxic and they have produced byproducts as they break down. And those byproducts are really different toxicity than the original. So all those kinds of issues need to be answered. And so people should look at, you know, the pathways of this material and, and where, what it could do to different organisms.